energy for those jumps. There's that big gap through the trees, it's so famous. And here, right there, it's a big off camber into a big compression, and you're going to enter into this big forest section, high speed, couple lines and awkward corners with roots in the corners. Like, that's really hard. It's really, it's a really, really busy surface. Roots, rocks everywhere. And uh, setup choices, as Josh pointed out in his place, so vital to get the exit speed on the way out of those rock sections because you walk the track during practice and it's really, you haven't got a choice in those rocks. You've got to maintain speed, otherwise one by one they slow you down. Exactly what you say, and those rocks, they're not lining. <laughs> they're just like one on the left, one on the right, and the bike is swinging left and right, and you have to keep this, you know, together and try to keep the bike straight, to don't send you off pissed. Big bike park corner there, they're really hard because they're hot park and they're like a little bit greasy in the morning. Do you have the moist? And this is really hard to keep the speed as well. You know, you want to crank, but as well, this is the only part you can recover a little bit before you enter in like the super critical section of the track today. Yeah, really, really different set of surface conditions here. And the leaves on the ground too, this is not friendly. Those leaves, you know, <laughs> they're slippy. Here we go then, into the chunder of the bottom of this course before hitting out on this double drop. Hastings just goes to the right-hand side of the first part of it. Yeah, it's like three line. Either you jump, drop, drop, or you go all right. You avoid the first drop, get the second one. And this is a big shoot, like really hard to stop the bike. It's like the clay dirt, you know, like you use your brake and sometimes you feel like you accelerate it, you know, like it's really hard to have the bike control. You need to have your heads up a little bit, aim where you want to go and you want to be gentle on the brakes today, you know? This is what all, taps. This place is what all the coaches bang on about, isn't it? Eyes up, look as far forward as you can because the minute they start coming back down to what the bike's hitting, you get in trouble very, very quickly. And keep that speed, you know? You see that she had the speed, the front, she lost the front, but she had the speed, and all of a sudden she get the grip again. It's a fine balance of the right speed or over speed or under speed. Really hard to, to, to do it, really. It's yeah. not so easy there. Pivot Factory Racing player manager Bernard Kerr, he said there's no other track on the calendar that you're as busy. He said your body is moving constantly, different inputs throughout the whole run, just correcting that, those little tiny losses of grip everywhere. Exactly what you say, you're always correcting. If the bike wants to swing left, you have to go right, you know, you have to let the bike go a little bit. Don't squeeze the bike too much with your knee. Let the bike play a little bit, but don't touch the brake. Like if you touch, you're really gentle. Hastings down towards the bottom now as we head into this final wood section. A couple of big jumps in here. Yeah, that some people are going to be that big triple, and I know two women are doing it, and it's going to be a big factor for the race. You carry a lot more speed there. Big, fast, finish and here she is, Hastings, Hastings, Hastings comes from down Pivot the Factory line. Racing, 24. a 3.51 seconds quicker than Empty, who did have that crash in her run, so Jenna Hastings goes into the hot seat. Watch out, already Valley Hall's quality time Harvest. from yesterday was a 350.7. Next up in the gate then, Hattie Harden from the UK, wearing the British National Champion sleeve. She just collects national championships like no one else. I think it's 18 at the current count, 18 <laughs> national titles across different formats, cyclocross, cross country, downhill. Put Hattie on a race bike and watch her go. Yeah, this, you know, when you exit that wood section, that little straight there, kind of flat, you need to get everything you got left in the tank. She was 1.8 on split number four, 49.6 kilometers an hour. That was yeah, quick. Yeah, 1.9 down on that time of Hastings over Harden, so she'll have to stand on the pedals now. 23rd the world's earlier this season in Fort William. Harden down the line at a 401.2, just 2.3 seconds behind Jenna Hastings. Losing a bit more time after that wood section, that flat section. You have to get everything you have on those pedals. Veronica Vidman there in the Continental New Crew Factory racing star. And what a time of it Continental New Crew are having here in Snowshoe. Absolutely loving this place. Louise Ferguson, her teammate, who we'll see very shortly, racing it for the first time. Yeah, 
Yeah, we can still see the dirt shining. That means still a little bit slippery. Well, full commitment there from Vinman. Yeah, going straight into that burn. One second up on the spread number four. She was three down, three. Last of time there. Vidman across the road gap. One second back at the last split. Is she going to make the time off? Veronica Vidman crosses the line and goes fastest by one hundredth of a second in Snowshoe, West Virginia. And big speed, 51 kilometers an hour. Doesn't get much faster. She was doing great on the split number four. She was three seconds down on the three, sorry. Yeah, the South Tyrolean good run from her. Here is another visiting enduro rider, Gloria Scarzi. What a year she's having. Well, well tricky corner, that's what I was telling you. Like, it looked easy, but it's a lot of corner with high speed, you know? And those two jump, two step, three step down, and turning at the same time. Not so easy. This is to looking fast. Up. This is looking fast to me. It is fast. 3.4 seconds for Gloria Scarzi, the Italian on the, can on the canyon bike. Looking great for 51.6 kilometer on the speed trap. Oh, early on the yeah, speed just position. Tucks in forward. early. Here she comes. Down Gloria the line, Scarzi. Gloria Scarzi Bingo. goes fastest by 2.4 seconds from Veronica Vidman. Italian, Italian knocks out Italian from the hot seat. Scarzi putting a run together there. Absolutely superb. Next on the hop, Louise Ferguson racing here for the first time. You see the bike going sideways when you're a little bit under speed, but she's still in contact on speed number three. Half a second back. Early For Ferguson. Early on the pedals. Come on, you have to crank a pedal hard, sorry. Push hard on the pedal there. We will take 10 plus protected through to the finals later on this afternoon. But I wonder if there's a problem. Is she stuck in that gear, Ferguson? It looked yeah. like she was really pushing a heavy one there. 4.8 back, split number four, 48.4 kilometers, and the speed a little bit. Ferguson just wondering if there is a problem with that new crew. Heads down towards the line, we'll know in a second. Five and a half seconds back of Scarzi then. Yeah, a lot, lot, a lot of time lost there. Need to reset, go back up. Really hard to manage to run on the day, eh? Yeah, hard to manage, but it's the name of the game. Mele Onset for Canyon Collective, the young Norwegian. Having a really good season. Beautiful shot here from the drone, and you can see, you see, like, position, like they're doing in skiing. Try to get the grip, caught those corners. This is looking good to me. It's looking great, like, super good flow, carrying a lot of speed. Fourth time, fourth last time out in Leger, oh, and she's that. green the whole way down. 3.2 seconds for Millie Onset. 52.4 kilometers an hour. Putting herself in a really good position here in the semi-finals. Jonsson goes fastest. 3.9 seconds faster than Scarzi. Well, there we are. This should be another trip of 50 So we're still one and a half seconds outside the fastest quality time of Valentina Ho from yesterday. But with, the with the crash, yeah. So plenty more time still up on that hill. Gracie Hemstreet, she's been in the wars this week. Couple of big crashes in the rocks, but made a tough stuff. The young Canadian, what a season she is having. First year elite. Really inside on the first corner there. She didn't even use the berm. Oh, I love the body position there, really active. Really good in the air as well, Hemstreet. The big jumps and gaps here will not face her at all, a Norco rider. Looking good, but a little bit maybe under speed when what we saw. 1.2 yep. back, yep, Cedric, second split, not yeah. going her way. Different line there, she went all in the inside. It's two line there, is it? But really important, I think, to take the outside line just to open that big corner, that berm, just waiting for you. That's your catch, basically. Yeah, and it comes at you for some amount of time, doesn't it? Really, really difficult one to see. But when you're in touch, like 1.2 on split number two, you're still in touch because our wood section is key today, especially this morning, still greasy. You can see the bike a little bit going sideways, nothing to do with suspension or tire choice. You see, she's losing more time, 3.8. Just because it's slick. 3.8 back for Ham Street then. She looked like she's aiming the line she wants though. Confident on the lines. 
Gracie Hemstreet, such a good bike rider to watch. Yeah, that, that little drop to flat really hard and we will cross the road there. I think it will be interesting to see the people who are going to squeeze one or two hard pedal there to carry more speed into the last rock section. Yeah, we saw Ryan Pinkerton grab a couple yesterday in the midst of the absolute chaos of those rocks and it really served him well. Yeah, more top loss in five, but one now in speed number four for the Canadian, Gracie M. Strip. Yeah, five seconds back. And I haven't really seen a big problem anywhere, Cedric. It's just not gone away. Oh, nice one on the triple Massive there. across the triple from Ham Street. That was beautiful. Yeah, no, it, it looks good, but a little bit under speed. It can be a deceiving track, can't we? Can't it? We saw Evan Metcalf yesterday, second place, and looked like he chilled the whole way down as Ham Street comes down the line. Five and a half back then for the Canadian. Not the run she will have wanted. We'll have to see how that stacks up. Monica Hrasnik, the Slovenian. What can she do today? Leaves the start hut. As we said, at the top, in the form of her life so far, but she's 5.8. Yeah, she's back, 5.8 on sprint number three. You can see her just opening those knees up there, letting the bike move underneath her. Well, looking pretty good there, though. Trying to carry the speed. Oh, Whoa. you see the front wheel there. That's what I was talking about. Oh, a couple crank, a couple hard pedal there in, into the road crossing. Really important to bring back the bike into the speed she wants. Those mo modern downhill bikes, so low to the ground, really, really hard to grab a pedal stroke amidst all those rocks without banging a pedal. But Prasnik, another, another yeah. three or four tenths have gone away from her in this semi-final, so we will take 10 through, plus any protected outside of that, into the finals later on this afternoon, nearly 51 kilometers an hour. Rasnik not doing the big triple that Hem Street did. 50.9 kilometers an hour on the speed trap. Rasnik tucks in, clears that big soft hole at the bottom of that. Gap jump, Monica Rasnik down the line, fourth. 6.3, you can see the leaves yes. falling off the trees. Yeah. Well, it's a lot more leaves on the ground than it was yesterday. It's got very autumnal. <laughs> it's got very autumnal all of Just a sudden. Just to make it a little bit more difficult. Exactly, there's not yeah, enough going on for your eyes to see. Here uh, is the reigning national champion of France, though, Marine Cabiru. Oh, aggressive out of the gate. That's what we want to see from Marine. She knows she's battling for second. The first of our protected riders, so Cabiru needs a sighting run here. She won here back in 2019. She was the only elite woman to do the big triple in the woods. Looking good there. Cabaru just absolutely soaking up that big win in Leger. You see that back wheel sliding in here again and that big compression and off camber. And she was the fastest through the first two splits we're hearing. Let's get confirmation on that, but she's dropped. Yo, she's back up yeah, again, a second and a five. half. She did a great bottom part of the Rock Garden. So Cabaru, a reminder, this is a sighting run for finals later on this afternoon. 52.2, nails the big triple. Nice one. Marie oh, Cabaru. Limit here on the grip, you see the body language, like the bike was sliding under and she managed to save that. Scott Downhill factory racing, heading down towards the line. Marine Cabaru crosses the line and goes fastest in snowshoe by 2.2 seconds from Millie on set. Cedric, what do you reckon to that? Good, good, it's good. I mean, she's going for point. I mean, it's a tight battle for second and third, you know, everything you can grab today. But I know this run as well is critical, it's difficult, it's still slippy, it's going to be dry in the afternoon for the final. Well, coming up next, we have the first of our two career besters from qualifying, Sharna Hearn for the white team up. So good to see. Yeah, the Australian fifth yesterday in qualifying her best ever quality session, growing in stature as the year has gone on. You see the different uh, body language on the flat corner in the grass, the pedals, you know, line up uh, like parallel instead of pushing an exit pedal. That's two different kind of type of riding. It's a horrible compression in yeah, that road so crossing hard. there. I stayed there for a long time in practice and I saw a lot of people losing the grip on the back wheels. Even those corner really hard, two lines there with a big root in the corner. Look at her, fully committed into that rock garden, but she's 2.8 back. 
As I say, it can just move away from you, this track, can't it? You can just get hung up on stuff, you can hit stuff, and the bike feels like it's going slower and slower. Yeah, one wrong hit on the wrong rock, and you will lose a lot of speed. Goes, Different line here, yeah, the outside. Medium, and, medium and to the outside. It's, it's more simple, but more terrain as well, less compression, but it's a lot more terrain you have to cover. Slightly more, more distance. Secure. Route around things for Sharna Hearn. In this section there, it's really difficult because you like in the galley, you try to keep the speed. It's a lot of dirt, it's greasy. The corner really awkward here. With a big compression, slick like rocks. And there, this big traverse here, so hard. Teammate Oshino Callahan also with a best qualifying position yesterday in the elite men's. Fifth place for him as well. 3.4 seconds back now for Sharna Hearn. Yeah, she need, need to let go of the bike now, try to carry that good speed she wants to avoid those, this bike going left and right. It's very easy to say from the exactly. commentary group. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I said. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just carrying a good speed there. Sharna Hearn muscling her way down this. Really two options there on the exit of this. You can go round that tree or to the inside of it. To the inside of it's fast, but really, really tricky to get onto. A Hearn on the pedals now. More, last more time, 4.4, it's break number four. It's moving away from her, this one, the Australian. Need to see how this will stack up as we head towards the finals. 51 kilometers an hour, though, good speed. Not doing the big triple there. Early on the pedals. Sharna Hearn then, over. The last big gap, heads down towards the line, and the Australian crosses it in third, so five and a half back, but that time looking like it may well work out into a finals position. And as we see on the new coach, a US national champion leaving the Star Hut. We are joined in the booth by a former US national champion on this very track, Aaron Gwynn. Aaron, that was seamless. <laughs> we you? made it. I was running over. I'm a little out of breath. But <laughs> yeah, man, just rode the lift up. Ah, it's a bummer to not be racing at home. The fans are already out in full force, American flags and all kinds of cool outfits. <laughs> it's going to be a good day of racing. But yeah, excited for Anna here. She's uh, had a good qualifier, looks like. and. Race in front of the home crowd's always Whoa. special, so hopefully she can uh, get this thing into the finals here. What are uh, what the latest, what's the latest update on the track conditions out there? Uh, it looks good, man. I mean, it's just going to get better as it goes through the day. This place is always uh, there's a lot of little like natural springs in the dirt and stuff, so you run through those puddles and then drag it across the rocks, so they're slippery. But as it dries out through the day, the track's just going to get faster and faster. The uh, the open sections were, man, it's like concrete because every night it, it softens up a little bit. Then the riders ride over the dirt and the sun kind of bakes it in. And I was looking at some of the open sections and it's, it's literally like concrete. Like there's, there's no traction <laughs> left. And it's a lot of leaves now. Like look like more leaves on the tracks. Like Yeah, it's not just us or has there been a lot of leaves no, done for sure. overnight? Because yeah. it was windy this morning. <laughs> yeah, it's that time of the year, man. Yeah, here we go. Those are <laughs> I just took a photo with, I think, the guy we saw on the uh, the live broadcast yesterday with the big sign and the hat and the whole thing. 6.4 back for Newkirk. <laughs> Trying to carry speed here. You see, like, the tire, the color of the tires, kind of a clay dirt. It's sort of red, isn't it? It's that really sort of tricky stuff. That big traverse, like, tell us about it. Like, how hard it is to keep the bike straight. It's swinging left and right. Yeah, super hard. I mean, all the way through here, you can see the margin air is so small. The race line is about four inches wide. There's a little natural spring in the dirt right about there. So you usually kind of run through it coming in, then you drag that mud across the rocks. This whole bottom section is really slippery, and it kind of just gets harder and harder, kind of all culminating into this last awesome <laughs> flat rock garden that she's coming into right here, which is probably the hardest part of the track when you're, you know, kind of fully tired, heart rate's maxed out. Getting across the lat line, really, really tricky. It starts so far back up the hill. Anna Newkirk last night on social media saying that she was surprised. She surprised herself with that quality performance yesterday, but it's been coming this year for her. Yeah, that's a little bit more time on split number four, and she was looking actually good, but it's... 8.2 back on four, yeah. Three and four really is where there's a lot of time, isn't there? Exactly. We saw it earlier. We're going to see all day today, I think. It's, you have to nail this section really good. It's really key today. 
But at the same time, you, you cannot just cruise at the top and in the middle, you know, like. Newkirk down the line then, 359.7, puts her into ninth, so right on the bubble for the top 10, they're going to go through. Next up, Tani Seagree, a free to go. She can be dangerous today. Canyon Collective, FMD. And oh, she look a rider fast. who spends so much of her time riding in Wales. She'll be used to the awkward lack of grip, the loose conditions, the chatter, the roots. Really good there. And the exit speed with a two hot pedal. Yeah, I feel like Tony's due for a big result. She's uh, feels it's it. It's been it? so good to see her coming back into form this year, getting that consistency back. I think for a semifinal right now, I think the key for a lot of these riders today is like just get yourself into finals, kind of get through the track, let the track kind of come to you as it dries out and gets better later in the day. Keep yourself safe and then be able to fight for it later this afternoon, which is, it's a tricky balance to find. I mean, you got to go fast enough to kind of get yourself into finals, but you don't want to make a big mistake and, and be out. But it looks like she's she looks a good one. 1.5 yeah. quicker at the second split for Tani Seagree of them. That looked really fast Oh, that there. was quick. That was quick. Around the two drops, like super nice. Really good bike control here. And even if it's really hard and steep and catch that big burn at the bottom. Looking good so far. 1.5 in the green on spin number two. Yeah, there are a lot more leads on the track today. Huh? Yeah, yeah, fall, yeah. Fall time is a, a lot, it's yeah, just That's a in. win from this morning. It was yeah. running really hard and it makes a difference visually. It definitely does, yeah. Third in Andorra for Seagraf. She's 3.9 3 seconds faster. Three. Well, she's on the right. And that time of Cabaroos, that's really impressive. Yeah, she looked good. She looked comfortable, composed. She let the bike She let the bike play. She don't squeeze the bike with the knee. She don't touch the brake too much or not too heavy on the braking zone. Easy to say <laughs> from here <laughs> in the booth. Good to see the, the British riders too. I, I talked to a lot of guys this weekend and, and girls and everybody was like, oh man, it's really sketchy. But it seemed like the Brits were all like, oh, it's, it's sweet, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it was like sliding around. So Tony yeah. looks like she's just, I mean, this is a great run for her, but it looks like she's just trying to be solid here, get herself in the finals. I would expect even yeah, more speed out on, of her later in the day. She's been on the podium here. Not some time, it's been number four though. In both the 2021 races and back in 2019, so. Seagrave, she's got a bit of form around here. Surprising not doing the big triple here. Yeah, I saw her dad on the way up the lift just a few minutes ago. He looked pretty chill, seemed to be in good spirits. Good he tends to, to be, he I, tends yeah. to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd be nervous, man, I'd be nervous. <laughs> Danny Seagrave down the line, second fastest then behind Marine Cabiru. So she lost time towards the bottom. 3.9, she was on the split number three. But for semi-finals, yeah, we do. That'll do. Interesting one, this track, too. It really takes a lot out of you, this track, because of how flat it is, how much effort you got to put in the middle of the track on the pedals. So might be a little strategy coming in there. You know, you know you're going to have to do it again later. Here's Nina Hoffman then on the hunt for the overall title. Needs a big performance in both sessions today. What has the German got in store? Valentina Hall, just a reminder then. 167 points. <laughs> she's, she's she right. needs from two sessions to stay away from the maximum scorable by this woman. So Nina Hoffman really just needs to charge today. Oh, carrying a lot of speed there at the top part of the track. Looking fast. We just talked about trying to maybe save some energy in semis, <laughs> and Nina's unfortunately in a position oh, oh, here. Oh, you see that? Uh, yeah. On the rock. <laughs> just tied that saw, rock. No, I saw, I saw milk. Is like. Going the out of the, the yeah, ceiling, a, a going out of the ceiling, tongue. maybe. I Let's have a look. Bit. Oh, oh no! Oh, boy. Hoffman's down. Hoffman's down at the top of the woods. Straight into the tree. Up, she's okay. Uh, good to see her back up. Yeah. She's back up, she's moving, just get, need to get a look at the rear tyre in that Santa Cruz V10 if it's held up. Cedric, I saw that puff of ceiling as well. 3.2 back now at the second split. Uh, just a little bit, maybe just a little... I don't know. Be interesting to see if that crash was after that 3.2 yeah. back, or if that's, you know, she could potentially reel that back in here if that's after the crash. Well, Tani lost 3.6, didn't she, So Yeah, and Nina's kind of in a position where she needs to kind of win every time she's on track. She has mm -hmm. to get those points. 
I guess it's an easier way to wear, race in a in a way because you're like, okay, we just got to go for wins. I was going to ask you that. Is it, it almost uh, more straightforward? I guess mentally it makes the game plan simple, but execution is definitely <laughs> hard yeah, to pull It's a different off. thing. Four seconds back though for Hoffman. She still have pressure on yeah, the back tire, but, but maybe she lost a little bit of pressure because we saw that. I mean, you and me, I mean, we saw something there. We definitely saw something, Cedric. I'll, I'll back you up. <laughs> Hoffman's so strong oh, on the bike. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, and you can see how aggressive the entry into that rock section is. Yeah, she knows she, you know, she crashed at the top. She needs to get every, I mean, every time she can really. Like the points are important. It's a battle for second place with Marine. So Hoffman out into the open then. What is the next split going to say? 6.4. It's moving away from her, not just the run, but also potentially the overall title. Well, this is all right. Sometimes, man, you have a crash, especially here. There's so many rocks. You crash and kind oh, of. Nice. Oh, that's nice. a big one. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah, yeah maybe you twist a finger, or do something, and you just pick the bike up so fast, and you take off, and then maybe a minute later, you're like, oh man, I'm I'm hurting now. <laughs> Having well, a hard time holding on. That was not the run she wanted. Nina Hoffman crosses the line into six six point two back. She is protected, but she needed maximum points from that session to keep the pressure on Hull, who is our last rider at the top. And how hard it is to reset when you make a mistake like this and be able to forget about it. Yeah. Valentina Hall leaves the star hop. There are 100 points up for grabs at the bottom of this one if she can go fastest. She was fastest yesterday in qualifying by 2.6 seconds. But oh. crucially, she left a lot of time on the table in terms of the fastest potential overall. Not a problem there for her this time. Looking good, though. Oh, she's quick. She's quick. Oh, ho, ho, ho. the bike is dancing. Just kicks out sideways into that horrible big hole, that compression across the road. Do we know after Nina's run just now, Valley wins this? Is that enough to do it before finals? No, she needs 167. No, okay. Exactly. 167 so we got to go race. And there's 100 That's up for grabs. Like so. Yeah, she left a lot of time on the track at the top yesterday. I don't know if she had a crash or mistake. That's oh. nice getting that drop. Whoa! Whoa. Off yeah. the double <laughs> drop. Back end steps out. She's 4.8 seconds faster. Oh, she's she's going for it. Valentina Hall knows no other speed other than full attack mode. I guess that's where she feels comfortable. <laughs> yeah, three World Cup wins plus the UCI World Champ stripes on her back this season. Fancy's adding the overall title to that. We're only in the semis. So plenty more oh, she's racing quick. to come today. She's but quick there. She's, she's putting a marker here. down, Aaron. Yeah, oh, yo, oh, yo, 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 yo. You see the front wheel, but no problem. She didn't even touch the brakes. Eight, Eight seconds. Oh, visually, she looks so quick. Look at the bike going left, right. For a semis run, this looks pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look at that. Going up a bit higher there to the rider's left. Looks like it works. I love the way she controlled the bike with the upper body. She tells the bike where to go. No questions. You can see the eyes in those clear lenses just looking so far ahead to the entry in the list. Oh, right on. Here we go. Hull she goes can. down then. She can still do yeah, it. She can still do it, yes. Get up, get up, get up. Yeah. You have to make sure nothing on the bars is damaged, nothing's broken. Yeah, but not the best place to come back no. on the bike with no speed. It's almost yeah, better to run. Yeah, you rewarded with this big pedal now. If she can dig here, I think she's in touch. She's going to need to work for it. Oh, she's still in the grip. She's so still the faster. <laughs> A 10 faster, so semi-finals run for the Austrian on the hunt for the overall title. Both Hull and Hoffman, big pull for the triple. Oh, you couldn't sweet. see it, but Cedric rode that triple in the commentary booth for the <laughs> <laughs> That's a big one. Valentina Hull then heads down to the line to round out the semi finals session. Wow. And she got first. First, she awesome. takes the win by just <laughs> under seven She's tenths. like, really? Oh. Yeah. She looks okay. Doesn't seem to be in any pain. Bike looks all right. Like she did in the semi-finals. She crashed and she's still <laughs> first. Right, so we will progress then to the finals later on this afternoon. Look Let's have a look at where the damage was done by Hull. Almost home free. That's this track, man. It's right at the end. It's yeah. the hardest probably section of the On whole course. Unchanging direction there. There we go. That yeah. rock. Yeah. That rock, just grab it. They grab the front wheel and be like, all right. It gets tagged by that tree on the left on her way down as well. But didn't seem to be any in any discomfort at the bottom of the line, Aaron. Yeah, she looked to be all right. Here's the results then. Valentina Holt, fastest. Cabiru, Seagrave, Yonset.
Ahern. Great result from Ahern. Another fifth. Scarzi, Hoffman, Hemstry, Krasnick, Vidman. So Nina Hoffman in seventh. We will take those ten through to the final. Jenna Hastings. Let's head down to Ashley. That crash. Firstly, are you okay? Yeah, I think so. It's all right. Just uh, a bit annoying, but still P1, so can't complain. Just trying to get the crashing out of the way for final run. Exactly. Still managed to finish first there. So very, very impressive stuff. Um, we've got the finals to come, and you know you're within touching distance of securing the overall. Is that playing on your mind? Um, well, definitely. I mean, I know that I don't need to win to secure the overall, which is nice to know. But at the same time, I want to win the race, so. Um, I'll just go and try again. And in terms of the conditions out there, we've seen a lot more leaves on the ground. How, how are you dealing with that? Yeah, it's definitely way more slick than yesterday. I thought they're going to clean the track a bit more, but well, I think they just can't get behind the leaves. So I'm um, all good. I mean, just uh, need to ride a bit more cautious, I guess. Well, best of luck. Thank you. There you have it then. Valley Hall, largely undamaged by that one grabs herself a hundred points in the process. So here are how things break down now. After that one, Nina Hoffman, the gap goes out to 499 and it's looking like a taller and taller order. Kabiru's third, Rasnik was fourth. Camille Balanche fifth in the overall now, injured obviously not here. Tani Seagrave, sixth. Blew it. Farina also missing an action after a hefty crash. And a new Kirk doing herself a part of good. A handful of points. Gloria Scarzi, 16th in the overall, having not raced all the races. There is another rider who's been in the wars. A lot of the big names have been crashing this week. Aaron, that man, Jackson Goldstone amongst them. Yeah, man, it's been uh, yeah carnage this week and so many crashes. I don't, I don't know if anybody's kind of got out of here unscathed so far. Well, this man's just been busying himself off, busying himself up with braking stuff on his bike. Greg Menar. Coming off a good ride at US Open last weekend as well. Yeah, so good to see him back like this on the box. Yeah. Well, we're back at the UCI Mountain Bike Downhill World Cup in Snowshoe, West Virginia, getting ready for the elite men's semi-final runs. West Virginia stretching out in front of us. Absolutely beautiful. It has been extremely foggy and wet all week, but the last couple of days it's turned uh, sunny if a tad autumnal. A lot of leaves falling overnight on the track, making things even more visually complicated for these riders already. Here are the standings then in the overall. Like Bruni now leads Jackson Goldstone, Lars Vergier's third, Finn Isles, fourth place. Benoit Coulange missing with a broken scaphoid. Then it's Cole, Deprella, Brosnan, Greenland, Kerr. We've had six races and six different winners this season. Absolute vintage iron, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know that that's ever happened, has it? I'm going to go with no. Probably not. No. no. <laughs> yeah, crazy. It's what we love to see, man. Competition's awesome. OK, Nico Malali then will get us on their way in the semifinals very, very shortly. Antoine Rouge is in there. Dante Silver, Jackson Connolly, Harry Malloy, Roger Vieira, Adrian Day, another visiting enduro rider. Seth Sherlock, not bad on enduro bike himself. Matt Walker, Richie Rude, surprise package enduro World Cup winner. Then fill out will Luke Meyer Smith is back, seemingly indestructible. Ethan Crick is in there as well as Chris Grice going well on home turf. Then Ollie Davis, then the GOAT himself, Greg Menard, Lucas Shaw, dark horse for a day, many people's favourite. Jordan Williams, Finn Isles, protected. Alexander Andreas Kolb, excuse me, is protected as well. Terry on, Innie Gay, Ronan Dunn loves this place. Jack Piercy, superb yesterday. Goldstone, Hart, Vergier, O'Callaghan, what a session from that man. Norton, Kerr, Greenland, and Bruni. Laurie Greenland, a lot of people talking about him, Cedric. Yeah, he looked good on the track, like you say. Uh, maybe like Simmons and home is going to yeah, help. Yeah, and fully recovered. He wasn't well in Leger, didn't race in the finals. He said his stomach bug, it was a week and a half, two weeks long. But we are racing here. Nico Mullally gets us underway here at the UCI Downhill World Cup in West Virginia and fittingly it is a US rider first out of the traps in the elite men's semi-final. Come on boy. Nico's coming off of a huge injury. He can uh, he can barely walk but he's on his bike. Big surgery. 
a lot of time off the bike the last few months. I think it was like a complete broken hip, pelvis, oh. some like big oh. injury from back in March. Good to see him back on track. I know this is one of his favorite tracks. He grew up racing here. He's got a ton of friends and family here. He's really, he's made a legion of followers the world over with the bike geeks off the earth, hasn't he? With his <laughs> yeah. framework set up and yeah. riding the aluminium front triangle and the carbon fiber rear triangle. And they're hoping to sell some frames next year to young up and coming racers and has the bike part that he's put so much energy into racing on the East Coast. He just, just a great servant of the sport, isn't he? Yeah, this boy doesn't know how to sit still. He's got his own <laughs> bike brand, got his, uh, got his team, got bike parks, got all kinds of stuff going on. He's been, uh, yeah, man, a, a great, incredible ambassador for the sport here in the U.S. Done so much for U.S. racing. Him and his brother run a race series Whoa. here. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, and he can still do that on a race bike as well. Finds time to go as fast as the best of them. Yeah, that's what impressive with him. He's always so good on the bike. And yeah. I always follow him. He's, like you say, I don't know where he finds the time to do all this. The passion and just incredible. Well, Aaron, John Lawler has just texted me to confirm 1995. Different winner every round. Shows all we know. Of course he knows. Yeah, of course he knows. <laughs> Yeah, crazy man. Yeah, and there's few guys on the planet that I feel like can ride flat, sketchy rocks. Oh, oh, oh. You see that? Just as oh, you see oh, that. I that. was just gonna say, as committed as Nico. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, he proved it there. He didn't let it go. It's just like. Yeah. <laughs> and that is just reaction, try reaction time and strength, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's incredible bike skill to be able to save it once that happens. Especially at that speed, too. He was pretty good through the middle, I think, yesterday. Lost a little bit of time at the bottom. I think he has a, you know, the strength, I think. He's usually such a strong rider. You can see him digging here. But I know that that hip and that leg is uh, about half the size as the other leg still. So I know he's struggling to kind of keep that strength up further down the track. Good to see him pushing through. Uh, yeah, triple to double. And what an accomplishment, though, just to get back to a World Cup after what he's been through this year. Especially with a hip, I mean. Yeah, so absolutely cool. superb. Nico Malali then heads down the line to give us our first benchmark time, then 328.581 in the semi finals. So Lloyd Bruni was fastest yesterday with a 3 minutes 13.2. So times will tumble as the afternoon goes on. What a story this is. Chris Cumming, Continental Nuke Proof Factory Racing. Six years in the making this run. He's qualified for a UCI World Cup and he's 1.9 seconds faster on the, split at the third three. split. Yes, Chris Cumming. And look how hard he's pedaling. Family set the team up around himself and Ronan Dunn to take them to the races. And it's just a good news story. You have to give your, you have to take your hat off to this man, Aaron. Yeah, really cool story. Sounds like him and his whole family putting that team together. 3.4 seconds oh, faster yeah. at four. Coming yeah. not just here to uh, make up the numbers in the semis. And 53.6 kilometers an hour. Some high speed there. Heads down to the line. That one will taste very, very good. Coming goes fastest then. 3.7 seconds. Yeah, nice. Yeah, That'll starts. do, boy. <laughs> Celebrates with dad Mark. That's not his dad Mark. <laughs> Uh, there's that's a lot of that going on out there today. <laughs> that's, that's mean two years. <laughs> George Brannigan leaves the star hunt for NS Bikes. You are... Oh, he's pedaling all the way into... Even in the corner, on the first corner. Don't have time to lose here. George has had some of the most uh, legendary runs here in the U.S. in the past. Even the drone oh. can't even follow the rider. <laughs> yeah. Windham made him. I, I hope he doesn't five have one of those today. Yeah, yeah, that was... Boy, he's looking good because he's... Oh, look! 1.6! Whoa, whoa, six, whoa, six, whoa, six. Six. 1.6 faster. Yeah, 54.1 kilometers an hour. He's got speed, man. I've been waiting for him to kind of have that breakout ride again. He could definitely be kind of one of those top guys if things come together. Trying again down the line. 1.4 seconds faster than coming. Clean run for the Kiwi. Yeah, good run. Be interesting to see what the times do today. I think the track is uh, definitely a little slicker than it was at the end of qualifying yesterday. Speaking of fast Kiwi, Sam Blankensop leaves the start hot. The, the man with no gloves. No, oh, you have gloves today. No. No? Oh, no. Yes? No. <laughs> it's hard to see. I, I said, know. I said no, 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 no. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> I said this yesterday. It wouldn't just be gloves. I will be buying every pad the bike shop has. It's awesome the way he's taking his foot out. No problem. Just to don't break. Look how hard he's pedaling. And the style. Yeah, the boy's got style, man. 
Yeah, 30th here last time out. Four See if he throws an air pedal in yeah. somewhere. 4.7 <laughs> back on speed number four. 4.7 back for Blankensop. So we will take 30 through, plus any protected riders outside of that. Even when he pedaled, it looked good. Yeah. Yeah, it's a tricky track for him, I think. We were chatting about it a little bit first day, and I think this track for both of us, we were like, eh, yeah, maybe not our favorite. <laughs> it's a tricky one. Lawler's, back. Lawler's been back on again. He says 2003 as well. Different winner every round. You raced that. You have no excuse. Yeah. Were you <laughs> one of those winners? Remember. Sorry? Were you one of those winners? No. I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at least I know. If not, I will remember. <laughs> <laughs> Britt McDonald then for MS Mondraker on course in the semi finals. I love the way Brooke is, you know, always have hard gear. He's found some time between three and four yeah. as well, the Kiwi. 2.2 back now for Brookie. What an amazing story as well after a big crash. He be able to come back at such a good speed. It's just yeah. unbelievable. Nearly yeah, 55 story. kilometers an hour through the woods. Another kid had to learn how to walk again, get back on the bike. Crazy what he's been able to do and come back these last few years. Brooke McDonald, one of the heroes of the sport, down at third then. 1.9 back on George Brannigan's time. So Brannigan and Connick and coming. Those times standing up nicely. Next up, this man, Jack Redding, had a crash the other day, tore the shin open, ran to the medics, got it stitched back up, and was straight back out on the bike again. I see him every morning, try to warm up that leg before he start because you know when it's shaking like this and it's cold, it, it hurt a little bit. It's missing <laughs> That's his, looking good. <laughs> missing his young son's birthday to be here, so he said, if I'm missing my son's birthday, I am not missing a second of track time. There I don't go. have to. Yeah, oh, he's in grand speed number four. He's fastest by half a second as well, Jack Redding. Amazing. I mean, he have a lot of stitches on his leg <laughs> right now. Oh, he's yeah. like watching this guy ride in practice. He's always talking to himself, commenting all the way down his own run. <laughs> Jack Redding then over the big cap, throws the back end out, heads down towards the line. And what he said will be his penultimate yeah. UCI World Cup, and he goes first That's in the run. semi-finals. Oh, Look at what yes. it means to him, yeah. Happy. Well deserved. That man has thrown everything at this this weekend. Next up in the game, national champion off Canada, Lucas Cruz. The Cruz missile fires for the Norco factory team. Yeah, another guy it seems like kind of due for like some of those breakout rides. A lot of expectations coming in. It's so difficult. Not that it's ever been easy, but a, such a stacked field in elite men's at the minute. Yeah, you try to get in that top 30 for finals, man. It's uh, I feel like half of those guys at any weekend could win a race. So it's there's not a lot of spots up for grabs. But it's, it's so tight. Well, he's won. Uh, he's won his last two. The Whoa. Oh, Canadian national champs and a, a BC Cup in Coast Gravity Park. So. Speed number four was 2.9, I think, back. He's getting better, Lucas Cruz, but he's going to be outside at time of the day. So 3.6 back. Has a look at the rear wheel. Yeah, no shocker there. It's always a surprise. You feel like you can make it to the bottom of there in your tires. Here we go. What a good news story this is. Dylan Maples. Young privateer from the States. Oh, look at good. 1.5 seconds faster at the third split. And he was good in that section, too. Then I think he's going to increase it or not. Absolutely. Yeah, 2.7. Yeah. <laughs> Tearing the chain off the bike to get it moving forward, yep. Oh, he was carrying a lot of speed in that tricky corner. Got a ride for the last few rounds of the season of Commissar Muckoff. Oh, looking clean. really good here. 2.7 into the green now. It's split four for Dylan Maples. Oh, look how hard he's pedaling. I love that. Oh, boy. Oh, oh bridge on that. Bridge <laughs> drops that. Back Still out up. deep. He's Dylan late. Maples, fastest in the semi-finals by 2.6 seconds. That was absolutely everything. Back up to the top then. For Tyler Irvin. Or Jacob Dixon, sorry, excuse me. In the wrong place on my timing screen. Young man from County Down in Northern Ireland. 
That corner, in the, that jump into the corner, lending into that hard pie kind of shiny. It's <laughs> yeah, it's tricky. You don't know what to expect on the landing if you the, get a little drift. Or yeah, not. that's the spot I was talking about. I went over that in the lift, and it was it was like concrete. And there's one big loose like baseball sized rock right on the line. I was <laughs> like, oh no, right where you want it. Yeah. yeah. He's on the red on the split number two, but pretty much in touch. Oh, did he end clip there? How hard it is if you end clip your pedal here to find the clip again yeah, when your bike yeah. is going sideways. Whoa. <laughs> right in the middle there. A lot of the Irish riders really loving these conditions. Very, very similar to back home. Not massive on gradient, but massive on rocks and routes and technical sections. So he's in touch here, Dixon. Yeah, it's a good ride. Yeah, like you said, Cedric, this is the, probably the worst track ever to come unclip that because most of the time, if you want to clip back in, you kind of got to drop a pedal so that you can unweight the pedal that you want to clip back in, and you do not want to drop a pedal down anywhere on here. You're going to spike that thing off a rock and have a huge crash. Especially with a low bottom yeah. racket. <laughs> it's gone wrong for him somewhere. Yeah. 4.2 back. Yeah, yeah, you see that last straight, that last section through all the rocks, it's it's basically just like a 30 second long straightaway. So if you're just a little behind on your speed, you, you're just losing for so long before yeah, exactly. you get to a corner to make it back up. It really yeah. just adds up on it. That's a good point because it's a long way. Jacob Dixon crosses the line then, 8.7 back. As I have got some breaking news in the commentary booth, Cedric, you did win in Fort William in 2003. Ah, uh -huh. what? <laughs> <laughs> the after party I was too much. He doesn't remember. The yeah. After party <laughs> uh, <laughs> was too hard. Sorry. Uh, oh, here we go. I win something. <laughs> Tyler Irvin then from the USA leaves the Star Hut as the celebrations begin for Cedric's 2003 <laughs> Fort William World Cup win. 2.6 back for Tyler Irvin. Come on, Irv. Super nice kid. Really been cool to see how much work he's put in the last two years here in the U.S. Big tall, rider. Tall guy, yeah. Yeah. Pretty much living in Tennessee in the off season. That was clean. That yeah. double album. Nearly 60 kilometers an hour through the speed trap. Are we going to see 60 kilometers an hour hitting the semifinal here for the elite man? Tyler Irvin comes down the line, roared on by. Nice. That's a, that's a good run. Two for the American back. fans. So Maples leads the way, then Irvin in the second. I have a question for Aaron. What do you think today? It would make a difference to have a 29 in front and back wheel on those rocks. Ooh, to that's carry a good it question, speed? man. If there was a track where I think the full 29 could be good, this might be it. Antoine Roche for Lapierre Zip Collective. You know who's on the full 29er, right? Yeah. Greg Minot? Greg. Yeah. Greg is. He always is. Yeah. <laughs> He's a big, He's big, big guy. boy. Yep. He's on leg. He's on leg. Yeah. Antoine Roche then. That was looking good at the top though, like really quick. Well, you're right, 1.2 faster. So there's a load of time in that yes. top section, but it's moved away from now 2.1 at split four. So interesting, Aaron, there's definitely time at the top. Yeah, it'll be interesting too. A lot of the stuff at the top and this very bottom, it's kind of the only part of the track that's actually in the sun. Everything in the middle is in the shade, so it'll probably dry out a little slower than the rest of it. Second for Roche, so that's that worked out all right for him. Yeah, it's going to be tight. I feel like that time is going to be one of those that's right on the bubble. Timo Lally for Pink Bike Racing. Fast Frenchman on course. Another fast Frenchman on course. <laughs> I got the Santa hat. Yeah. <laughs> Christmas is coming. Yeah, the holidays are just around the corner. I love this time of the year. Big holiday guy. <laughs> yeah, my wife always gives me crap because I start listening to... Christmas music in July. Do you? <laughs> I love it. That's oh, so man. <laughs> there are the beautiful rolling hills of West Virginia. Is that guy straight back? Look at this guy. Look at the mustache. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I love this suit. The, the hat. That mustache has been there for a while. Yeah. Man. yeah. <laughs> That's not new this week. Dante Silva. Well, speaking of Americans. This guy has a really, really bright future in front of him, Aaron, when it all starts clicking. Yeah, such a good kid, too. Always smiling, yes, always exactly. positive. Love this kid. Grew up racing with him uh, when he was just a little kid. Him and his dad out in the race near Vegas, actually. Well, there's 1.3. Oh, he's the the top top. Too. Yep. Yeah. Bit of crisis management in the middle of that rock section, but he's pulled it back together again. Look at the carry speed there when it's really tricky. Oh, you see, he's on. pumping. 
That's what you have to do here, like to keep the bike moving, you know? Yeah, so hard to get out of that. And you want to exit quick, as quick as possible. Yeah, three seconds back at the four split for Silva. Yeah, being a SoCal boy, these are these are about as uh, foreign as conditions as. <laughs> but he's raced here a few times. Come on, buddy. Dante Silva. Oh, oh goes <laughs> long, wheels down, tucks in behind the stem, crosses the line. Fifth place for Dante Silva. That time of Dylan Maples, three seconds. Yeah, that was that's, a good one. That's a good, good run. But it seems like he has left time at the top. Yeah, he knows he gave a little bit away right there at the end. Next up, Jackson Connolly, Team High Country, the Australian rider. Pretty aggressive at the top. That was really, oh, you see, yeah, the yeah, top, there you go. good at the top, really aggressive. Is it a tricky track, Aaron, in that you know that there's so much technical stuff coming towards the end of it? You try and keep your powder dry, but then you can miss out on those little seconds at the top. Yeah, for sure. I was chatting with Richie and a couple of the guys, and it was like, man, you, you probably just, like, uh, you almost have to play a little mental game with yourself. Like, pretend that the track ends at that double drop or something and say, I'm going to race till there yeah. so that you keep that intensity up the first half of the course. And then once you get there, you just kind of adjust and get yourself to the finish line. You basically lied to yourself Jackson again. Jackson Conley goes spot. fastest yeah. by yeah. eight hundredths of a second. It was so good on, the, on those jumps at the nice. end. Good to see another Australian going fast mm. too. Really, really built into that run, Connolly. An absolute treat. It's so aggressive out of the gate. Giving himself the best possible chance of making it through to the finals. Fans are joining themselves here in Snowshoe. And here is the European champ, Antoine Vidal. What a weekend Commissar Les are having. Oh, preach on that. And amazing skills on the bike, that kid is. Very aggressive, you see, on his back wheel, pedaling hard. I hope he don't lose too much energy there. It's his sidekick, Jack Piercy, though, who's right up and amongst it in terms of the quality. But Antoine saying that um, he doesn't really like the slippery conditions, but he's in win half a second. If he can turn the last one green, the rest of the red ones won't matter. Vidal goes down the line. Vidal goes third. A tenth of a second behind that time of Connie. So already a tenth of a second equals three positions. Yeah, and it's it was 61 kilometers an hour. Next up, Harry Malloy. Continental Nuke Proof Factory Racing. A British rider enjoying the conditions in snowshoe. Tenth of a second fastest at the first flip, but 4.3 back now at the third. Malloy done so much for this team in terms of coaching the riders, helping them, the, the two youngsters develop. That line is tricky as well because you have those two trees. Like it's really tight to get in there, especially when you start to lean. And you, when you're that tall. Yeah, and right where you want to lean, the rock kind of falls away from you. It goes the opposite direction. So if you hit it just at the wrong angle, it shoots you straight into the tree. 5.9 back for Malloy. Now 60 kilometers an hour. First we've seen it today. No, we saw 61 just before, Antoine. Apologies for that. Yeah. Good catch, Cedric. Malloy, wheels down. Heads down towards the line. Ninth for Malloy. 5.3 back on that time of Jackson Connolly's. That, that's quick. 60k now. 60, no, that's, that's really fast now. Yeah, especially fast given that we're not somewhere with a load of gradient dealer. Yeah. Leo Grissel for the Les Arc mountain bike team. It's funny the way they want to keep, like, you know, to stay really high to make sure they don't, they, to make sure they carry the speed before those jumps. 1.8 seconds back now for the Gristle missile. That's yeah, looking pretty good. He's yes. been looking pretty good in practice too. Good speed through the rocks at the bottom. Oh, early on the pedals there. Yeah, this, is, this is good. I think this is going to be kind of around where that bubble might be. So he's got to fight here. Yep. Really, really interesting. In sixth place then, 321. Really, really interesting. We said this last time I did me as well, how that time kind of develops as the semis go on, that you kind of want to be the right side of it. Yeah, it's tricky too, because I think the guys that 
you know, obviously the later you go down, the better the track's going to be. So if you're one of these early guys that's kind of going to be on the bubble, you're going to almost have to push extra hard. Just a reminder then, 3 minutes 12 as Roger Vieira leaves the start hook. 3 minutes 12, the fastest qualifying time of one L. Bruni yesterday. 1.8 and speed number 3 for Vieira. This guy can pedal. Vieira, the Brazilian. Such a nice guy as well. I saw him earlier this morning, smiling, ready to go. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Tags the back end over that triple. 2.4 seconds. Back, so this could be another one. Yeah, not afraid to pedal. Oh, Pre-jump as well, the last jump. Ducks down behind the bars. Vieira crosses the line in seventh. 2.7 seconds back, so... We are seeing it. Three minutes 20 in the round there, being the sort of benchmark time. Always hard when you go back and look at the results and you're like, man, if I just would have went a half a second faster, <laughs> I'd have been like 10 spots yeah, faster exactly. and qualified. Adrian Day, former Enduro World Series overall title winner. Really oh. super, super talented rider from the it's south of France. It's going to look good here and be good because it kind of uh, the, the terrain we used to in Europe, you know? Oh, yeah. is yes, seven is. tenths faster. He's nine tenths faster. And he's incredible on the bike. It's it, it's amazing to see that guy Such riding. Such a natural touch. Oh, he's like a mini Nico. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, exactly. For me, it's what it is. Like it's a little little him. Yeah, riding that prototype Lapierre bike. Lovely looking vessel. Heads down towards the line. Then can Adrian Day go fastest in the semi-finals here in Snowshoe, West Virginia? Runs it out wide. Day down the line in fourth. So he lost some time there, but a 319, maybe that should work. Maybe because he ride in the mud at the, just yeah, the last part saw of that. the track. <laughs> Swung out, didn't he? <laughs> to cool down the tyres. That'll be it, yeah, that'll be it. <laughs> and they're coming uh, thick and fast uh, here. Seth uh, Sherlock for intense factory racing. The Canadian. You heard that at the gate. When they yeah. switching gears. Oh, come on, boy. 1.1 up, 1.5 up now at the four split, Sherlock. You see that? He won more. He was pumping at the bike. <laughs> Had a little chat this morning. Seth's always in such good spirits. Like the happiest kid, no matter what. He's, he's such just a coming nice off. lad. Yeah, he? and he's just coming off a broken wrist. He went back. I think he had a week on the bike, raced the last uh, enduro race, and then came back for a World Cup downhill race. So he's, I think he's got maybe two weeks on the bike now. Sherlock down the line and goes <laughs> fastest <laughs> in snowshoe by six tenths of a second with a free 18.6. Aaron nods his head. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that kid. <laughs> if you ever want to be in a better mood, just hang out with Seth for a few minutes. <laughs> he's your man. Oh, so happy for him. I can't remember where it was. I saw him a couple of years ago, and he was off to play Frisbee golf, and I've never seen anybody more excited about <laughs> chucking a Frisbee around in my life. Matt Walker leaves the start hop for Pivot Factory Racing. Along this guy probably races him and his teammate Eddie Masters. They oh, race that's, oh. that's quick there. They race more than just about anyone else on the circuit. They do the full enduro and downhill circuits. 3.2 back though. Hello again, fast through that first split. Yeah, looked like he was pushing a bit up top, getting close to those pads with the pedals. I love the way they're using that last corner, pedaling everything uh -huh. they can. Goes deep off of that. Walker down the line then, sixth place, 2.7 seconds back of that fastest semi-final time so far off Seth Sherlock. So we will take 30 riders through to the final, plus any of the protecteds who have any issues along the way. Heating up nicely here in Snowshoe, West Virginia. There's a man, do, does one man need four Vuvuzelas in a chicken suit? Of course he does. <laughs> 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 Nothing exceeds like excess, Connor Fearon. That's someone I love to see riding as well, flat pedals. I know, I can't imagine riding flat pedals on this track. Yeah, the, the, the amount of impacts coming back through the rock section just must just kick your feet everywhere if they're not clipped on. Must have a problem in the second split because yeah, he's been kind of in touch ever since. Okay. So, so good to watch on the bike there. And yeah, the video stuff this guy shoots is awesome. Oh, man. there was a video did the rounds on social earlier in the week. I think Matt Stagg shot it with um, Rage Against the Machine as the track on it. And yeah. it was just like, it's everything you walked out of a totally. downhill. Yeah, I know, got a bit of Sam Hill vibes to it. Yeah, Connor Fearon, cross the line, 21st. 
12th season of international racing for the Australian. They have put the effort in. I would give them that the fans <laughs> here. They are showing the Leger crowd exactly what America is made of. Joe Breeden, four intense factory racing. Aaron's gone very quiet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Albert, I get too nervous with my guys on the track. <laughs> oh. He had a good US Open, though. He did, man. Really close. I think he was within half a second from uh, second, basically. He right was, yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yep. yeah, really good ride. Really cool to see him getting momentum back. He's had a really rough couple of years. Big injury last year with the elbow. Beautiful little gap across there to go set up Cut. over the right-hand side. Oh, Whoa! no, straight to the tree. We saw a couple of riders going wild there. Breeden, big impact, mid run, right oh, where look, you it's don't Lever, want to, it's, it's Levers, right it's up in the bars. It, it's high, and I oh, know it's still there, but it's all oh, oh, go to the bottom of the track. We'll get my time now, 327.7 for Joe Breeden. Mm. Bitter. Could have been a good one, yeah, he'll be bummed with that, man. Bitter disappointment for the big man from the southwest of England. Look at that brake lever. That's the front as well. Just taking a second. Win Masters. Yeah, yeah win. The back, the back wheel guy. Yeah. Good to see this guy back too. I keep, I feel like I keep saying this, but man, the, the boys have been taking a beating this year. It's a long season, isn't yeah. it? Especially with the semis as well. There's a lot of going yeah. extremely fast. Wynn had one of the scariest crashes I've ever seen on that finish line jump at the first race of the year. Three seconds back in ninth then. So a free 21.6, we reckon. Three minutes 20 mark is kind of where the bubble is at the minute. Am I right in that? Yeah, I think that's what it is. 20. Next up, Mark Wallace for Norco Factory. You get to see Mark have a good weekend, man. He's a guy that's been on the podium in the past. He can definitely be a podium rider when things are clicking. I'm well, well used to the uh, lack of traction where he rides extremely, extremely wet, slippery, really technical. Super, super physically strong as well. Oh. 3.9 back at four though for Wallace. Yeah, lost a lot of time on split number four. 3.9 for Mark Wallace. I think that time of Sherlock's will do well, you know. Yeah, yes. I think that should at least get him in the finals. Pretty confident in saying that, I think. Yeah, I think for Mark too, a new team this year with Norco coming off of Canyon last year. It's always a little bit of an adjustment period. New bike, new team, kind of get everything dialed in. Yeah, get, get used to it team. as well. Yeah, we've seen that in cross country with Pauline Ferran said really the, her first three or four races on Ineos Grenadiers was a, a dress rehearsal for the second half of the season. And then she went and double worlds win. Gaetan Vige. That kid, if you <laughs> link it together, could be dangerous. Look, yep. there you go. He's he just needs to. Oh, inside. You just need to yeah. chill inside line there. That he's technical, he's, he has everything, but it's just n not going his way sometimes. Another really, really nice human being as well. Let's see what the four splits is. So he's lost 1.8, so. Different line here, you see he did a jab, he used the bank. That split between three and four looking really, really crucial this afternoon. Big pull, makes it. Oh, I'm gonna be short here. Gaetan Vige out onto the open piece section then before lining it up for the warp speed finish straight. It was pretty low speed, like 53.6 kilometers an hour. Vige crosses the finish yeah. line in 13, 322. Yeah, he lost a lot of time at the bottom. Next up, the big man, yeah. Richie Rude. Come on, Richie. On that specially developed downhill bike from Yeti, both he, Jared Graves, Mick Hanna, Sean Hughes doesn't get much more intelligent in terms of bike design and experience in designing it. Richie. Oh, land deep uh. there. <laughs> Won the Enduro World Cup overall earlier on this season. This part will be absolutely no problem for him. 1.3 seconds back at the four split for Richie Rude. Yeah, I imagine he won't lose any time at the bottom. Cool story with Yeti here too. Uh, Richie was basically like, hey, I'd like to do some downhill races. So Yeti was like, okay, we'll build you a bike. And uh, a few months later, here you go. Raced his, <laughs> last, yeah, raced his last World Cup downhill race in 2013, which is unbelievable. 
Rude. Heads down to the water line. That one was in half yell. What can he do in snowshoe? Fifth place nice. with a free 19.7. We could be talking about Richie Rude going through to the finals here, boys. That would be Not awesome, man. how hard he was pedaling yeah. at the end. He probably have like two more teeth on his <laughs> he strips, generate. He strips the Allardyce finish off yeah. Shimano rear. So rear strong cassettes. he could win a uh, arm wrestling contest with both arms tied behind his back. Yeah, with one of the Rude. bears that are knocking around <laughs> up there. Craig Williamson. Not short of strength himself, as 1.1 back at the third split. And that was a big man. Yeah, another rider capable of a big result. Pretty much any race. This year's been a little bit of a head scratcher. Again, on a prototype bike that they've been working on, developing hard. Two seconds back at fourth now, so... Williamson getting comfy on Madison Saracen. Another rider as well, who he's done so much World Cup downhill racing. It takes a while to adjust the semis format and the changes that have been made there. Yeah, it is a weird one, man. I the semis are, uh, they create a bit of drama, which is cool, but for the riders, definitely a, a whole new game. That was a good run. Seventh, yeah, yeah that's good from Greg. Yeah, especially 1.1 at the end when he was like on split, he was like two, a little bit higher than two back. That's good. Well, you can see their water in the finish area just a little bit there to try and give uh, some traction to get these things slowed down. Austin Dooley then leaves a start hot for Comensal Schwalbe. Another US kid we ride with a bunch at home, man. He's, he's so consistent. Seems like always in that kind of 20 to 30 range, oh, waiting oh, for he's that quick. breakout ride. He's quick there. That looks fast through yeah. there. Not too high on the jump, squeezing the bike down. Yeah, this could be a good one. Oh, there go. Yeah. A tenth of a second faster so far than Sherlock. Looking good. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's clean. It's fast. Really, really committed run from Dooley as he dips ahead and gets on the pedals. Heads out onto the finish straight. Dooley down towards the line. The American rider trying to display Seth Sherlock. Dooley goes second fastest. A tenth of a second off of the 318.8. That should work well for the finals. Phil Atwell from the UK then. Propane positive based in Greece. Another impressive rider on the bike. Yeah, I love watching Phil ride, man. Oh, man you look up at his running. Instagram stuff too, he's always doing oh. like tire taps on picnic tables and on oh, dino bikes like, as well. Just yeah. The craziest stuff. If you haven't seen this guy on Instagram, Nicely go check done him out. There. Like, yeah, one of the best bike riders on the planet, probably. A lot of skills. Different color gloves. Such a cool I, style too, just full attack mode. I couldn't do different colored gloves, I've said it before. I, I do it in socks sometimes, <laughs> when I don't find the other one. That's just you in a hurry though. <laughs> yeah. Five tenths, five tenths back at fourth. Atwell on the move here on the propane. It's, it's funny the different speed. Some people are hitting 60, 61 and some of them 53. Phil Atwell heads down the line then, crosses it in ninth for a free 20.2, right on the bubble, one and a half seconds back. It's getting congested around that area. Yeah, it's starting to happen. You got about 10 spots in a second and a half, man. Luke Meyer-Smith leaves the start hook, got beaten for one of the, by one of, uh, for one of the first times by his younger brother at the US Open, so bit of rivalry there. Out for revenge today, the Australian oh. national champion. It's sideways here, two seconds back on the sprint number three. All good natured, of course. These two really push each other on. Yeah, this kid wants it bad, man. Every time I see him, it's just, he wants to be up there so bad. I think for him, you know, it's just kind of trust your skills, trust what you got. You know, don't sweat the small stuff. Just keep doing what you're doing. He's got so much skill on a bike. Super smooth. Good there. inside line there. Oh! oh! Lost the front there. We saw couple riders having issue there, and it's a big tree waiting for you there. Oh, Meyer Smith down right where he didn't want to be at one of the fastest parts of the track. Yeah, around 60k an hour. Around 60k an hour. Yeah, there's, you kind of can't see it there, but there's like three mud ruts right before you oh, exit in no. that shadow. And if you kind of hit that wrong, it really robs all the speed. Oh, really? Good to see him get up. That's a heavy one. Yeah, held on to the bars for pretty long as well, didn't he? Next up, Baptiste Pierron, Dorval AM Comensal, another team having a good season. Is it the greatest spin oh, number yeah. three? Seven thousands of a second in that one. For Pierrot lost 1.5, spin number four. Yeah, so he's gone backwards. And say Dorval Ayan Comensal soaring highs with that win for Benoit Coulange in Leger. The crushing lows out of this race for Broken Scaffold. But his teammate Baptiste Pierrot is on track now. 
Peron down towards the line. Baptiste Peron crosses the line in 10th place with a free 20.6, 1.9 back. So right on the bubble. Yeah, you need to be in the beginning of 20. Wonder where they're from. <laughs> <laughs> Land of the free, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this guy's going fast. Sebastian Hogan Villa. I yeah, Col Colombia know how to send it. Yeah, he, I saw him in practice, and man, he just looked good every time I saw him. Always had good speed. The boss is here this weekend. Yeah. Chiguero is here, so one of the heroes of Colombian downhill roaring on the team that have been overseas for most of it. 2.4 by under split number four. Yeah. I mean, when you're able to ride fast in the concrete and in stairs, I don't think, you know, riding in dirt would be more <laughs> difficult. Yeah, urban, yeah. urban downhill is so big in uh, Latin America. This track's got a bit of an urban downhill feel to yeah. it. They're not <laughs> stairs, but there's a lot of There's enough for rock. There's enough stairs, rock. stairs sideways. Hogan Villa pre-jumps that, then down the line in 12, 2.7 back on the leader's time, Seth Sherlock. Semi-finals here in Snowshoe, West Virginia, heating up to Uarike Penny, a fast mover on course for MS Mondraker. Another incredible kid, like always laughing. Fourth. Yeah, Fourth such fighters. a good yeah. touch. So friendly. And man, he does some lines, even in Andorra, I was standing on the side of the track and everybody's hitting the same line over and over. And I'm like, okay, that's pretty much it. And then he comes through and just pulls up off of nothing, jumps like 20 feet and then goes inside. And I was like, what, what the heck is that? He's <laughs> four tenths quicker, it's working it's for him working. today. This is looking good. Yeah. The Hoot or Ricky Penny, silky smooth on the jumps around the pump tracks, making it work for him through there. It lines it up now, heads for the line. Having a great season so far, the Kiwi crosses the line in yeah, first fastest by three tenths of a second nice that's really good end of the battle of the track in the semi-finals for the elite man good to see him put one together oh he was checking his back wheel simon chapelet then the first of the three cube factory racing riders nails that first turn a lot of people start to pre-jump that now that's a sketchy roller i was standing there first day of practice and it it's blind coming in and people were almost jumping off the left side of the track. It kind of like, you got to hug that pole on the inside there too. Yeah, every single millimeter being used here in Snowshoe Chapelet is 2.1 seconds uh, back though. A little bit of a cold and hot at the top and now he's a 2.1 on split number four. If you're a young rider on that team, given the conditions we've had this week, you would just weld yourself to Danny Hart and just watch and learn, wouldn't you? <laughs> Yeah, Danny, uh, he goes real fast in this trip. Absolutely loves the place. Simon Chapelet down towards the line. What can he stop the clocks at? 12th place with a three minutes, 20.9. Nice. A lot of riders giving time up at the bottom. This one's hard because you feel like you're so tired at the bottom and you feel like, oh, I've made it this far safe. I just got to get it home, but you, you can't. You have to keep pushing the line here. You, you just lose too much. Jacob Jewett for Pivot Factory Racing. One, two, Jewett brothers. Oh, it looks good there. Woo -hoo -hoo. Ooh, that yeah. was fast. <laughs> He's moving. This, this looks good. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. You, you got to push at the bottom. I don't know where the splits are, but this is looking good. Well, this is looking, looking good. good. No, no, he's moving. Yeah, look. Look there at that. Free tense. Load of time at the top. 1.7 in and the green there. Yes, 1.7 on the split number two. Three tenths of a second for Jacob Jewett now. Can he hold his margin? Down the line. Oh, oh yeah, it's looking good. <laughs> Three jump stop, no problem at all. Heads down towards the finish line. Jacob Jewett then goes fastest in snowshoe. To who Enrique Penny's time dispatched. That'll do. That will do. I'd say that would look like him heading for the finals. Whoa. Thick and fast here today. West Virginia. Ethan Craig for GT Continental Factory Racing. It'll be hard to stay away from those celebrations last night. Ryan Pickerton <laughs> yes. taking the overall title with one to go. Yep, another podium capable rider when he's on it. Had a little bit of a rough start to the year. I think he had an injury. Coming back strong these last few races. Good to see him back up to pace. Yeah, that's yeah. looking good so far. Not going, you know, not going sideways, carrying a lot of speed. This yeah, is this perfect. Is good. Yeah, this is perfect there. Looking super, super fast. Out on track, Ethan Crick. Oh, that's a lot of speed. 
Looking good at the bot, yeah. If he kept this clean, this should be a good run. Crick heads down the line. And what the clock's going to say. Oh, that's going to be a good one. Because that, that was quick. That could well be the fastest. Oh, off oh it's quick, is. quick in two diameters. <laughs> Put him back on the track where it's safe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the amount of times I've fallen over in the pits, clipped in in front of a bunch of people, and you're just like, oh, no. Oh, here we go again. And you're one of the greatest of all time, man. That's unbelievable. Max Hartenstern, the German. Second cube factory racing rider, but most accidents do happen close to home. That's what yeah. they're saying. Though. Yeah, Max could do good if he's on a good one because Max works so hard and he's like you say in a big team. Good, oh, you see, he's on the yeah, almost a second back. I'm split number four for Max Artiston. Hartson, he's been around for so long in the international scene. You do almost you can be forgiven for thinking that he's a lot older than he is, still only 23. Yeah, and I've been hanging out with him in finale. He's working hard, super nice kid. He know where he want to go. 14th last time out in Leger. It's starting to head in the right direction. Hartenstern down the line. Second place behind Ethan Craig, who did go fastest with a free 15.5. Yes. Nice, yeah, that was a good run. 1.1 back. Chris Grice from the USA had a good qualifying session yesterday. Yeah, so good to see, man. Chris has uh, had so much hype coming up on that specialized team as a junior, was kind of supposed to be the next kid, had a couple of injuries. Such a nice kid. He's been able to kind of just keep working through it, and I think yesterday finally showed kind of where he should be every race. This is looking like a good one, too. Yeah, seven tenths in touch. So the fastest time from yesterday's qualifying session was a 3.13.2 from Loic Bruni. And we're kind of seeing what we think will be. You see the way it was in the inside, almost in the grass there. Yeah, we're kind of seeing what we think will be the bubble at around about the 3.20 mark for the 30 riders going for the finals after this one. Rice crosses the line in third place. Good run for him, nice. 3.17.1. Yeah, get that thing into the finals, that's awesome. Might, be, might well be enough. On the Gen S Specialized setup. Ollie Davis, what a season this man is having, the big Australian. Yeah, I've been impressed to see him kind of start coming into form here. Uh oh. Oh, oh no. Man. no. That's such a bummer to see. He's okay because it's a lot of rocks there. Davis is off. Yeah, that's uh, the, the super tech uh, after the steep section, the long uh, traverse with all those rocks. Yeah, this seems to be where a lot of the injuries were happening. I think his teammate uh, had a crash somewhere right in there, Here too. Here we see it. Oh, Whoa. The oh, this hip. Yeah, uh, right to the hip, hip straight away. Yeah. Working, oh, but, yeah, but SI joint area. Back on his feet, but here is the big man himself, Greg Minar for the Santa Cruz Syndicate. Can you do it, Greg? Today had a mechanical yesterday. Jumps oh, yeah. across the yeah, nice. Three point eight back though. As two Niners will be uh, working down here at the bottom in the flats. Yeah, big wheels for a big man, Greg Minar. Has some time to find though. Flat tires have been an issue for him in the last few races, but it's just. Oh, that kind of happens if you push as hard as Greg does. Yeah, I think, uh, I don't know if I can say this, but I've heard Max is working on some new tires for him. I think yeah. they got some stuff in the sidewalls. Just trying to get a little more strength there to keep the tire off the rim. Yeah, he's been going back and forth between a Peru tire on the weekend. 56.2 kilometers an hour for Greg on the speed trap. Prototype linkage on that machine as well, trying to get the back end. Santa Cruz didn't make it easy on themselves. They've got their riders are kind of on the complete opposite end of the spectrum as far as height and everything goes on Menard bike side. down the line of 14th, right on what we think will be the bubble at three minutes 20. Is he protected? I don't know. He is not protected, no, Greg Menard. No. Matt Walker, national champion of the UK, then leaves the star hut for Madison Saracen. 2020 UCI World Cup overall title winner. Uh, pretty much in touch on split number three. Six tenths back at the third split. What do you see now? On split number four, one point one. He lost more time. Love to see this guy get back up to speed. Seems like something's just been missing a little bit watching him in practice. Kind of just looks a little frustrated. Bike, I think maybe they're searching a little bit. 
trying to figure things out. Really? When this guy's on, man, he's, he's hard to beat. But. Yeah, really, really difficult whenever you've got all the riders in the prototype machine and you're getting yeah. a lot of feedback and yeah, you haven't got that control, you. sort of. Got to take a few steps back to take a step forward. Fourth, though, from Matt Walker, 1.7 back on that time with Ethan Craig. So Ethan Craig's time holding up here in Snowshoe. This man, wait till you hear the reaction. That sleeve will get the whole way down this track. Lucas Shaw. I hope he's okay after that crashing practice. Yeah, I talked to him earlier. He said he was fine. He looked good, looked happy. I think he was third after the third split yesterday, and he was definitely trending in the right way as he went further down the track. So, Oh, really inside here. But if you look at his numbers, he's one of the riders who really has adopted quickly to this new setup. He goes faster, then faster, then faster. Yeah. Most weeks. Yeah, fitness is not an issue for Luca. He's half a second in touch though at the last split. Yeah, this could be a dark horse to, to potentially win the race later today. If he puts it together, man, Luca's got the speed. He was fifth last time we were here. What can he do in the semi-finals today? Luca Shaw heads down towards the finish and crosses the line in sixth with a 317.8, so 2.2 back. Drops on at the minute. Mark Wallace leads that little charge down there. Surprising to see him lose a little time at the bottom of the hill. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> donuts. It's donuts time. <laughs> Where are donuts? I come exactly. Up here. Where are the donuts? Waters? What is this? You're the resident American. You should be bringing the donuts, man. We, we discussed this. Dylan I'll bring the, the, the smoked meats. Yeah. Later. <laughs> <laughs> I had some of that the other day. Yeah, it's good. The elk sausage. Next level. Two point three for Levesque on split number three up. He's on the bubble. He's on that bubble. Was uh, on the enduro bike 20, last time out in Chatel. 29, 29 wheels, front and back. Had a really good enduro ride actually as well. Did ask him, you know, it's a bit of a risk to take with him in the middle of a dyno season. He said, no, he loves racing, keeps him fit, keeps him sharp. Yeah, it's crazy how those guys can just kind of jump back and forth. The vest down over the finish then, 16, 4.3 seconds back in 16. So. Currently, it's Wallace Silva is the first to drop in 31st. Andy Cole for Continental Afford and then one in Liagang. His first GCI downhill World Cup, nine years in the making. If this guy... Oh, pedaling in the air, probably switching a gear. He won more, he won. <laughs> yeah. Looking good here at the top and physically he's strong. Yeah, told us where we walk the track and practice that he's a tenth of a second faster. The penultimate split, so looking good. Yeah, yeah. one of the six different oh, winners. Even the camera this year. <laughs> was couldn't Kinda follow him. Still a little bit in the championship fight here if he can really put some things together. Yeah, just these points and it's just the smile gets bigger and bigger as the year gets on as Andreas Cole gets ready to round off his semi-finals run. Goes second, second fastest. Three tenths of a second, so that time of Ethan Craig. The first of the really, really big names who've won a race this year. Can't beat it. Troy Brosnan, speaking of big names. Love watching Troy ride. Yeah, he can ride. He kind of yeah. went through a couple races, kind of in the mid-season, where it seemed like that aggression was missing a little bit. Seems like he's found it again these last couple races. I know he'll just be probably trying to get it through the semis here and into the finals so we can really throw it down. Ooh. Yeah, a little hard here. 3.4 bar, that's big number three. Yeah, he's, he's kind of frustrated figure at times this season. Second in 2021 here in the second race. Lost more time. 4.4, split number four for Troy Brosman. Yeah, 4.4 seconds back. Oh, that was quick there, hitting that burn. Those Canyon uh, collective bikes, absolutely silent when they come past you as well. They have those things dialed. Should be all right for Troy. I think he's sitting, what, eighth in the overall or something. Should be protected in the finals here. Brosnan, down the line. Lost a lot of time at the end yeah, as well. 20 Quite seconds. Before, yeah. So Gaetan Vige now drops. Jack Redding's the next man in the drop zone. On to another race winner here. On yeah, to another exactly. of our race winners. <laughs> Step by step, he's coming back. He needed it. He needed oh, those vacation. <laughs> Jordan Whoa, that Williams. was close there. Interesting to see how he kind of responds here. Another rider really started the season so strong. Kind of had a little bit of a dip off here yeah. in the middle. And oh, nicely done really there. Smooth Seems through like there. he's getting that aggression. Oh, back that's here. good. Oh, that's quick there. In the inside, keeping the inside, controlling the bike. Seven tenths of a second faster for Williams. Now he's on a run here in the semifinals, not protected. 
Look like he's back to normal, where he want to be. Wants to be back to that scintillating pace of Lenzerheide that saw him take his first elite level World Cup win at the first time of asking. I was good there. Yep, four tenths now at the first flip. That's a little bit of time, but not so much. Another man who will be used to conditions like this from oh, the nice. UK. That yeah, was good. Yeah, it jumped out. I saw a couple of riders doing it in practice. Makes it look smooth through yes. there. So crazy, the competition. I mean, this guy won the first World Cup of the year, and he's not actually even protected in the finals. Yeah. <laughs> Still got to earn his way in there. Oh, that was great there. Carry a lot of speed. It's a tough, tough time to be a downhill racer as Jordan Williams exits that wood That's section. Good. Four tenths, so he's held that margin through the truck, the toughest part of the track. Yeah, he's looking good today. Kind of looks like he's got a little bit of that edge back to him. He's yes. walking up on the right side of bed. Maybe he's been to the barbecue place already. <laughs> they might be open. <laughs> no, but clean, no overdoing it, perfect pedaling as right quick as he can. Stands on the gas pedal, off the big drop, goes deep, tucks down behind the bars. Williams over the line in third place, so six tenths back, so lost time there towards the bottom, but... Yeah, after the pedaling section. Should be good enough for the big show, that one. Oh, big moustache. <laughs> There's a moustache. That is a moustache. Oh boy. Well, often you see an eagle with a moustache, but Finn Isles <laughs> leaves the start hut for specialised gravity. Yeah, this could be a big run. Yes. Finn needs it, man. He's, he's, he's Ooh, just quicker. in touch on the championship here. Yeah. He's, he's got to yeah. make the most One of every second. time. One second. 185 beats per minute. So he did have the overall points leader jersey earlier in the season, yet to win a race. 2023. Lost a little bit of time on split number four. 187. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> 189. Heart rate getting close to 190. That's usually right about the time where I feel like I'm I'm definitely gonna throw up in a few <laughs> seconds. <laughs> Start thinking about Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Heads for the big root gap then. Ben Isles. That's solid run for him. Looks solid enough to me. 316.2 mm. in the third. So some time to get on that last Ethan straightaway. Ethan has done something special in that yeah. bottom split. Yeah, you got to get... They stop. Remy Terry on the comeback trail continues. Had a big crash as well. He had a sore neck. He laying on his head on the... Never has a small oh, crash. Oh, yo, yo, yo. <laughs> it was a big one. I saw it and I was like, wow. So he felt a little bit stiff, but it looked good to me on the bike. Look at that, when Remy is like this, he's dangerous, look Whoa. at this. He can have the bike going sideways, dancing, no problem. He's not going to touch the brakes. Always remains in that attack position for you, doesn't yeah, he as well? Look at triple, 1.1 up, Terry on now as he exits the final wood section. Let's see what happens from here on down though, because this is where Ethan Crick looks like he did something special. Yeah, it didn't look like he got out of those woods. Yeah, the speed as 51, he to, yeah, 51 kilometers an hour. Yeah. So yeah, we were right 1.3 seconds back. You see the speed, 51. I mean, the not fastest nothing. speed was 61 today. That's 51, that's 10 kilometers difference. In a gay then. Those guys on the bike, Inigues and Estac are just impressive the way they're riding the bikes. He's a second faster at the first split. Let's keep an eye on what that will translate to at split four here in the semi-finals. 30 Whoa. riders yeah. will progress to the final, plus any protected riders outside that. So, I mean, it's been a battle royale for you. Oh, do you have a flat? Yeah, yeah, flat, yeah flat, flat tire. Flat, because I could see when he was pedaling, he was a little bit going sideways. So disappointing yeah. for Matteo in again. Let's see how it affects oh, his time, though. No. Yeah, bike squirming about. Ah, miserable feeling, though. Oh. Still pedaling. Man, he seemed like he's on the edge of a breakout week and two good rides in a row. Yeah, in again, down to the line then, but still 320.8. So, win yeah, Masters, 31st and out. Irvin's next on the bubble. Oh, what a bummer. Like, just at the end of the woods, like the big rock garden. Yeah, the last rock yeah, on the track, just probably. <laughs> Well, we're going to have to take an intake of breath here because this next rider has really started to call this place a home far, far away from home. So we wait to see Continental Nuke Proust Ronan Dunn in the Star Hop. Yeah, Ronan's been.
He's been fast all weekend, fast in time training, fast yesterday. This could definitely be a, a big run for Into him. Into the top 10 now. Ronan Dunn qualified 10th yesterday. Had his breakout ride here last time we were here, fourth. Every time I see him, it's just going quicker and quicker. Even in practice, <laughs> run after run, it's just like more gas. And, and the tires are never on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> so it's finding a gap somewhere. Both axles are never pointed in the same direction. They probably have to tighten the spokes every run. Who would be oh. this man's mechanic? Four tenths faster at the first split. Like quite a bit. It's a good amount. And he's held it to the second. Oh, he landed inside of that rock. I, I, you know, the rock who could grab the derailleur today. Grabbed a couple of pedal strokes in there as well. Ronan Dunn. Love that section here. See Whoa. what he's going to do. Double drop. Just got stood up by something there, but nails a double drop. That line is good there. It and you stay inside there. Keep the nose inside. Done. On a run here in the semi-finals in Snowshoe, West Virginia. That was good there. Yeah, silky smooth through there. Yeah, because that corner is really tricky. You just kind of feel that fluidity and smoothness is now being married to the speed and aggression. Three tenths, super good through there. Oh, wow, that's, that's he's got fast. got a gap here. Yeah. Oh, he's, he went around it now. I saw him do a gap there in practice. That's pretty <laughs> wild. Yeah. Landed straight the on all the big roots. sideways mid -air. <laughs> This is where he'll tend to excel, I think, is this technical stuff, man. He just really lets it hang. Top three so far, Crick, Cole, Van Isles. Can this man get his knee and then amongst oh, them? Takes a foot off. Yeah, yeah it's, it's okay. It's at the end good. of it. Yeah, it's at the end of it, and he didn't lose too much speed. No, he can pedal. Here we go. Six tenths, so he's made time where most people have lost it. On a good run here, for sure. See if he can hold on to it. Ronan down 55 kilometers an hour through the speed trap will exit these woods. Yeah, look pretty clean. Yeah, that's good. A good marker being put down here by Don. Can he ride himself into the finals? It's looking likely. Ronan Dunn crosses the line and goes fastest by a tenth of a second ahead of Crick. Really good run. Just gets better and better, doesn't he? And that's how you want to do it. Green the whole way down as well. Yeah. <laughs> Jack Piercy, superb run yesterday in qualifying. Impressive, impressive run. Fast rider, it's paying. Ninth for him yesterday in that qualifying <laughs> session. Super That's low cool. there and yeah, sideways. Yeah, scrubbing it. Drum yeah, shot nice down here is oh, just oh, Nicely done there. It's nice they tighten that up into that big G out this year, man. The last few years, you come in there in the race run, you just about always bounce your face off the stand. <laughs> <laughs> He see the steep shot. Whoa. He flat it. Right uh, to the corner. He hit that rock and explode the tire. It's off the rim. Jack Piercy. Oh, it's still it. going. No more tires. Oh. On the rim. Jack Piercy on the rim here in Snowshoe, West Virginia. The tires full ailing around behind him as is that red insert. Oh, he's rolling into the rocks. Listen to the noise as Jack Piercy makes his way down here. Never say die, Jack Piercy. With the wheels off, the inserts out. Oh, listen, look. Bang. Boom, right there. There you go, it just popped off the side. I don't know if it hooks something uh, maybe on the way yeah, in. Yeah, it, it's a rock on the inside. Just went straight into it, into the side of the, uh, the tire. And he's finally had to abandon ship. The tire becomes wrapped in the drivetrain of the bike and that is all she wrote. What a bitter disappointment for Jack Piercy. Jackson Goldstone of the Santa Cruz Syndicate leaves the star hop. What are you expecting from him today, Aaron? I mean, he's second the points. He's uh, he's really the one that's most in touch with Loke here for the overall. So I think he's uh, I think he's been a little disappointed after the last few races, even U.S. Open last week. And just kind of looking at him when he crossed the finish line, I can tell it's uh, it looks like he might have a little extra motivation this weekend. You know, he's he's wanting to get up to pace. He's in the championship hunt here. I'd expect a big weekend from him. He's a young man in a hurry, isn't he? he? He knows that he's got time on his side, but at the same time, he just wants to go fastest every yeah. time he's on the bike. Well, Hard to be patient when you're so close, you know. You're, you can see the championships right there. It's like, all right, let's go get it. Is he the green? Two seconds! Two seconds faster for Jackson Goldstone here, who is protected, so this is a marker for a race run. If someone can dance on the bike, it's Jackson Goldstone. Whoa, having to hang up <laughs> both sides of the bike to keep it in a straight line there. Oh, so good to see that. Changing direction really quick, using the berm there, the full berm. That was fast through there. 
Yeah, his technical skills are so good when the track starts to get really gnarly down in here. And as we've seen this year, he, he tends to actually have some really good splits down low on the tracks where they're the hardest and everybody's tired. He definitely finishes strong. Oh, that double nice. that. Yeah. Yeah, that 3.29 at the first oh, split. That's, that's a good ride. <laughs> you see that? He ride the side of that rock. Nice and light on the bike. Oh. Do you think that will help him here? He's got that smaller sort of stature than some of the bigger guys like Andy Kolb and could just surf that wave on top of all the rocks. Oh, he's yeah, quick. I think so. It's when you're a bigger rider, you can carry that momentum when you're lighter, you kind of stay on top of things better. But I think with Jack, he's just he's whoa, so whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, he didn't go off best. He stopped. He did have time to play with, but just got bucked by something and his weight got sent over to the left. Yeah, and looked like he's looking for looking clipping. Down. Yeah. Tried yeah. to clip again. <laughs> right when you think you're home free. Yeah, yeah what I was saying is like he's he's so good technically. I think his his skills really just start to shine as the track gets harder. But with that comes a little bit extra risk sometimes. Still makes a triple. So as I say, he is protected. That one won't matter too much. Goldstone down towards the finish line. Now this will be a marker for what he can do come finals. What could this time have been if he hadn't just had that little bubble yes. towards in the rock section? So 2.1. As Antoine Roj drops down, but will hard, not make the finals. But hard for the point, that's when he went wrong. He lost, uh, He tried to save that, he didn't give it up right away. But it was just like, the, the, you know, when you wheel it sideways like this, in the opposite direction you're turning, it's so hard. Danny Hart for Cube Factory Race, it's almost... I mean, he was maybe happier in the, the wet, wasn't he, than... <laughs> oh, he looks so good. In the dry and down here, but he's won here before in 19, and that title decider where Bruni walked away with it. Yeah, one of the biggest, biggest, craziest race days I've probably ever seen in my career. That battle between, I think it was Loke and Amory for the championship. Oh, it was absolutely oh, insane. There we go. As Hart gets bucked off the bike. You not know, protected, Danny Hart. So after those big berms, bike park berms there. Oh, no way. That's like the hardest place to crash to. It's so hard to get back up to speed. Yeah, it's kind of super so flat. Yeah, yeah, so much pedaling after that. On that prototype carbon fiber cube, 5.8 back now at the second split. Yeah, he knows he's going to have to kind of go for it here. Yeah, 6.1 now oh, at the he's third. He's good, though. <laughs> he's going fast there. He knows. It's not all the way. All the way over to the rider's left there. Oh, he's going, he's going to finish with even better pads breaks than he had at the start. He's not using it. Whoa. Oh, do you have a flat? No. no. Whoa. Yeah, look at all the leaves in there. Yeah, yeah, the <laughs> leaves. That's why I see the bike going sideways. I'm like, what? They There's haven't been there all week. Yeah, I will there tell was you no that. leaves there two days ago. And None. it's covering all the rocks as well. So Hart mashes the pedal seven seconds back now. He was, he was only half a second faster. Is he not protected at night? No. Oh, yeah, I guess that's from last Loris year. Vergier. What can this man do? Interestingly, we spoke to Lloyd Bruni earlier in the week, and he said this is the guy that he thinks he's really racing in the title fight. Now, with Bruni, there's always a hint of gamesmanship. There's always a hint of uh, just uh, doing something clever. But Vergier goes well here and goes well in Mont saint where we head to next. And he's fastest at the first split we can see from our screens in the booth. Yeah, and I would agree a little bit. Ooh, I think Jack point one of the second. <laughs> and he was on the edge there. He was aiming for that tree. 1.1, yeah. one, split number two. Goes to that middle line off that drop. Yeah, the front there. Whoa, you see the bike. Yeah. <laughs> so Danny Hart crossed the line and told him 41st, so he will make finals. Inside line here for Vergier. You can hear him breathing. So good to watch Vergier, but Aaron, do you think that experience will put him right in the title fight? Yeah, I think so. I mean, Jackson is completely capable. He's a rookie, though, so, you know, it's a bit of an unknown. We'll see where he stacks up. But Loris is a, I mean, he's proven that he's a legitimate championship contender. Seven tenths now, faster, Vergier. Oh, he's pedaling there on the only section. Grabs a couple of pedal strokes, Vergier. Oh, it's, it's, it's fast there. You another, see the bike. I mean, it feels like we said this 10 or 12 times, but yeah. another man really deserving of a win this season. Yeah, I can't believe he hasn't won one, man. When this kid's on, yeah. he makes it look so easy. Oh, nicely done there. Oh, what an exit speed there for Vergier. Vergier, about as fast out there as anyone has looked to me. One, one second. Vergier, finding time. Just like done, finding time where most people are losing it. 
He's a rider. I'm curious how he likes the semis because he's had some really good semi qualifiers, and then he has to go back up and do it again for a finals run. And it seems like he it's not he's just thing, missing maybe? it a little bit. Yeah, I don't know if this new format for him is something that's been a little trickier to adapt to. Vergier crosses the line and goes faster by 1.9 seconds than Ronan Don. Good speed, 56.6 kilometers an hour too. Oshino Callahan up next. As we look back, and Loris Vergier. I think somebody could double off that road. <laughs> 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 the big sin. Yeah. Bit of food sin. <laughs> Man, big run from this boy yesterday. Big, big run. Fifth in qualifying yesterday for Oshin O'Callaghan for the YT mob. That was nice. That was really cool. A little bit in the inside, but it was really cool. What a story this lad's had. Find a place on that team in a global hunt for 300 different athletes. Super low there. Looking fast through this top section. Oh, good speed there on the compression. Good exit speed on that compression. Oh, nice line there. Not 0.2 seconds up through the top sector for the man who was a junior world champ in 2020 in Liagang. Yes, it's good to see. He's a huge, huge talent coming all the way through. Best in Portuguese cops back in the day, seven tenths of a second, I say back in the day, 2019. <laughs> Beat a lot of young up and comers consistently and had a, an injury affected uh, 2022, broken collarbone, broken wrist, but he's back in action oh, now. He landed deep there. Yeah, tough one. Another one of those kids, man, as a junior, just so fast, winning a lot of races, a lot of hype, get to the elite, have some injuries, just kind of a couple of growing years. You know, I think pretty normal if he can kind of get a couple of races under his belt, I'd expect him to be right back up there towards the front. Just needs to stay on the bike. What's the third split going to tell us? Looks to be pushing still. Yeah, he's pushing. Oshina Callahan on that white yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 2.1 faster now oh. than Loris Vergier. Oh, he, yeah, that's, a, that's a big time so far. Yeah, he's pushing hard. He needs to stay on the bike and hold that gap for the rest of this run. Yeah, keep airing the tires here. Yeah, too. Oh, oh. let it dip here. <laughs> into the flat. Straight into the flat. Really, really tidy with his knees oh, as well. As he keeps tree. everything in line. Dude, yeah, that looks. Oh, that's that really good. good. Pedal on the way out a lot. I feel like they found a new line there. I don't know if something moved. They used to have to go up by that tree to get the inside. Now they're just going straight into it. So he's 1.6 faster now at four. Land Loris Verge, Oshino Callahan coming of age in front of our eyes here in Snowshoe, West Virginia. I was good. 56.2 kilometers an hour on the speed trap. In the heart of the semi-finals for the elite men now. O'Callaghan lines it up, heads for the line, tips her over that. Oshin O'Callaghan goes fastest by 0.8 seconds ahead of Loris Vergier. Matt Walker drops out of finals contention. Next up, Dakota Norton. Congratulated by Ashley at the bottom there. Look at 40 land there. Yeah, he was there. <laughs> There's no look how well that bike there. set up. He yeah. just he pulled it straight over. the fork, like super stiff fork. He's, he's, yeah. he's not we'll using the all of it. Yeah. <laughs> right, Aaron's about to go quiet again. Dakota Norton <laughs> takes off. Oh, we just need to get her through. Oh, nicely yes. done. Nicely yeah. done through there. The winner of the US Open last weekend. And he's in touch here. It's half. There's half a second in it. Yeah, just got to get her through the semis here. Dakota's been riding so good. He's been riding so good all year. Just really had a rough go earlier with some luck and stuff. But man, if he puts it together today, this, this oh, could whoa, be a whoa, first whoa. win. Absolutely pins there. <laughs> oh, no! And the front end just uh, good. goes. Keep it going. Yeah. That's kind of been the thing, man, is he really pushes those, those limits kind of everywhere sets lines up a little bit further outside than most riders, which is really good. But when you do that, you kind of, like in Leger, you get just outside of the main line, even though you're kind of in where you want to be, you're not kind of in that main groove and you start playing on sort of that more slippery, loose dirt. 4.3 seconds back, but he has made that mistake at the top of the run. So he's got track to play with here. Yeah, if he can rebound here, that was nice. He just switched that line up today. He was going around that rock. Riding that new intense M1. 
Look, you see the work of the suspension there, just like really aggressive through the left. Oh, he's going. <laughs> Yeah, it always, Dakota always seems to be a rider that builds as he goes down the track, especially in race runs. Really gets that momentum going, kind of stronger all the way to the finish line. Fight Pro Free, so he's lost a second, but he's looking extremely fast through yeah, here. Really good there. Carry a lot of speed, and you hear the crowd. Yeah, if he can keep this on two wheels, good to the finish. I think this will still do it at least. Yes. Yeah, Dakota not, not protected, so he needs to keep busy here. Oh, yeah. Oh, different line here, off. yes. That was nice. Oh, that oh, was really one. good. Really carries a lot of speed on oh, right now, nice. Trace. Yeah, that was good. That was really good. Yeah, yep. three point four and spin number four. So he's bringing time back. What a brave run this is from the American rider. Three and a half seconds back these days with a crash, man. That's a. Yes. He's on pace. He's just got hold of the Look how fast he was through that triple. Yeah, I'd imagine he could be bringing time back all the way to the finish here, maybe. Dakota Norton, is this going to be enough to make the big show, to make the finals? Comes down towards the line. Dakota Norton crossed the line in fourth with a 2.898 and a 315.4. <laughs> Troy Brosnan drops oh. in 31st. It's all kicking off here in Snowshoe, West Virginia. Aaron, what a recovery run from Dakota Norton. Yeah, that you can was, breathe again, by the way. That was a <laughs> he didn't make it easy on me. Uh, yeah, I feel like everything's there, man. I, we've been saying that, you know, for a little bit now. It's like if it could just come together, he's, he's got everything he needs to win, win one of these races. Free to go. Look at the four. He Look at the hair flow. <laughs> oh, he's a few. <laughs> Bernard Kerr then, BK drops for pivot, factory racing third, fastest in qualifying yesterday. He's went been looking good all weekend. Yeah, went second here last time out in 2022. Not protected though, Bernard, but he's showing the speed all week that says, which suggests he should make this through. Yeah, watching practice, first day of practice when it was really slippery. Uh, it was kind of, I think they had a rain a few days before that. And it was watching everybody kind of come through, sliding around, uncomfortable. Bernard was was noticeably kind of just, just look more at ease, like kind of making the lines work. 1.3 seconds back, though. Oh, yeah, that's... Uh... I would, 2.7 would... now, so I wonder if there's been issues somewhere. I wouldn't expect him to be the strongest up until about right here. This that is when it turns through yeah. the middle. Yeah, this is really where I would I would think he'll start to excel. Where it turns ugly. Bernard Carr over the double drop. Well, we Whoa. Saw, we saw this not on it's possible, you know, because it's shaved a lot of time at this section. Skips across there, through that right left quickly. Yeah, if he's not protected too, this is gonna be a that's a really hard position to be in, especially on this track. You know, you know that you're going fast enough to qualify. You don't want to push too hard and make a big mistake. It's What's the next one going to say? Is Aaron going to be right? Will BK have brought time back? No, he's lost another second. 3.7 now. Yeah, oh, he's paddling hard there. Yeah, I'd expect him to kind of just hold it steady here. Try to get it to the finish, save it for finals, and then really let it hang out. Yeah, it could still be good enough for a final spot, this from Bernard. Really oh. straight off that. That worked well. Yeah, he had good. a different line. He was a little higher on the rock there. Looking good there. Bernard on the move for Pivot Factory Racing. Team that's getting bigger and bigger. Three seconds, so he's fine. Seven tenths of a second in there. Just grabs a little sit down there, get his breath before this last section. Yeah, that is a solid ride. Be able to take a breath after this one. <laughs> yes. Get it in. <laughs> Kind of just such a relief to make it through to finals. Like, okay, pressure's off now. I can really ride my bike. Just focus on going fast. Fifth place, and it's still Ushino Callahan who leads the way with two to go. Cool looking kit. Yeah. It's definitely a race kit, isn't yep. it? Yeah, he, he, he loves him a bit of moto kit. You see the transition of the light, then when they enter, oh, dark it is. Yeah. When it's bright out like this. Laurie Greenland leaves the star home for the Santa Cruz Syndicate. He was really, really ill in Leger, and 
He said he's finally feeling like himself again. Was super fast in qualifying yesterday. Oh, he looks fast. Oh, inside there. Whoa. You see, he didn't even take the jump. Like the big um, kind of big roller. Greenland was actually in P1 at split four yesterday. So he kind of had Whoa. one of the most... Oh, that's quick. One of the most composed runs, top to the bottom. There's going to be a lot of spin on that. Gaps right all the way corner. across there. The drone can't keep up with him. It, it was, he was, <laughs> oh. oh man, that, that right hander, there's a bunch of roots like right in the rut. And as soon as you hit him, it slides you in to like square the rut off so hard. There was a good gap between those top three and the rest of the field yesterday. Greenland, as I say, absolutely spellbinding the top four sections. Three tenths of a second, but he's lost 1.1 now at the second split. Oh, how close they are to that tree. Needs a big, needs a big race result, doesn't he, Laurie? Inside line here. Yeah, it was such a bummer to see him get sick in Leger. Whoa! Oh, hold on. on oh, clips off the, the second ball. part of that drop. <laughs> Ride the ball, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seemed like he had so much momentum going into Leger. He was really establishing himself as a podium guy every race. And then to get sick and miss that race and lose all the points is like, ah, oh, man. But good to see him rebounding now. Heart in your mouth stuff from Laurie Greenland off that second drop on clips. Dabs a foot. Oh. Yeah, another rider yeah. I'd expect to kind of, especially in finals, be able to hang it out down here low. Really excels when the track gets technical. Greenland is protected. Oshima oh. Callahan still leads the way here in the semi-finals for the YT mob. Can the man from Bristol in the UK, Laurie Greenland, do it in the bite it? So, so Callahan, Vergier, done. What a top three. 1.9 back and split number three for Laurie Greenland. Yeah, Ireland nice. first and third here in Snowshoe West Virginia. He's 0.9 se seconds in touch now, Greenland. Yeah, he hit that little double kind of just before the right-hander exiting that rock section, kind of slapping into it like everybody else was. Uh-oh, flat tire. Oh, yeah. Oh, flat tire. Flat tire for uh, Greenland. Yeah. That's a bummer, man. Oh. Got to try to get those points in semis. At least he knows he's on pace. Greenland is not good. He is yeah. protected. <laughs> so, another Santa Cruz Syndicate bike. Tire problems down over the line. 20th place for Greenland. But, as I say, he has already booked a spot in the finals. How about Ocean? He could potentially win this thing. <laughs> He's get a semi win under his belt. Yeah. What a top three we are currently looking at in the semi-finals. O'Callaghan, Vergier and Dunn. Ireland first and what first. Save. Oh, terrifying. Wow. <laughs> hey, you see, he couldn't even clip there. He was looking <laughs> for his battle when it's super steep too. What commitment though. But this man, Lloyd Bruni, is beginning to look ominously confident around the pits. Yeah, I think he's going to be tough to beat today if he has his best run, especially as the track keeps drying out. A few of these guys that excel in that technical stuff that are so good kind of will give a bit of time up on these flatter sections, and that's where Loic's just so strong. He's not going to leave any time on the track in those easier sections of the track. Yeah, three minutes 12 yesterday on a damper track than this one for the Frenchman. Three tenths of a second, find at the first split. Yeah, it, this is championship form, end of the year. These are where these top couple guys really start to... Three kind of tenths again at the second split. You see, different line there. He followed, the, like, he was in the middle, in the canyon. Got through that turn. I think that was a problem area for him maybe last year or the year before. Well, memories don't come much sweeter than having locked up two overall titles at one track like this man has here in Snowshoe. I love the way he's, like, getting the contact really quick. He don't try to stay too much in the air. You see the way he rides too. It's it's very calculated, very smooth on this track. When you you know you don't want to push too hard into one of these rocks or kind of have something out of out of step that could lead to a, a much bigger mistake and possibly a crash. He's just very smooth. Kind of everything's nice and tidy, keeping the momentum going forward. Not a lot of moving around with the bike. Half a second, so he's going faster. Oshino Callahan's time in trouble here. Lloyd Bruni on the hunt for a win in the semifinals. I like the way, you know, every time look like the bike is going to hit a rock and lose Whoa. speed, it just push more and it's back to speed again. And it's not just the bike that resets itself quickly, he resets himself. Yeah, he so resets, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, and he's pushing with his feet. 
Interesting to see switched up a line there going outside of the tree. He was going inside earlier in the week. I think that's where Benoit had to crash. Oh, yeah, this is looking good. 1.4 oh. seconds at split four for Bruni. Those specialized bikes, too, I, I know from experience, they carry a lot of speed on flatter tracks, man. To get that momentum going, they're... 172 yeah. beats per, per minute, 59 kilometers an hour through the speed trap. Lloyd Bruni on his way to setting the fastest time here in the semi-finals in Snowshoe. Lloyd Bruni goes fastest in two sessions in a row. Oshino Callahan is second, Vergier third. Baptiste Piron drops, Phil Atwell is right on the bubble in 30th. Should make it through by my calculations, but Bruni, fastest in quality, fastest in the semi, maximum points so far. And he just has a different mode, Aaron. Yeah, I mean, he's he's been here before, right? He's done this before. He's, uh, I think he's usually the strongest under pressure when these championships are on the line. You can tell by how many world championships he's got. Really Look. find the find the best out of himself in these moments where he needs to. Oh, the slow-mo of the tire working on the ground with a suspension, body position, like you say, Aaron, every, everything is calculated. He makes every race track look like his local downhill track. Yeah. That he knows, <laughs> yeah. the, like the back of his hand. Bruni then wins the semi-finals. O'Callaghan, Vergier, Dunn, Norton, Kerr, Crick, Kolb, Isles and Williams are the top ten. 2.5 seconds faster than Oshino Callahan at the end of that Bruni there. Great result for O'Callaghan though. Hartenstern, Tyrion, Grice, Walker, Jewett, Goldstone, Shaw, Enrique Penny, Sherlock in 19th. Then Dooley, Greenland in 21st, protected, Connolly, Maples, Vidal, Richie Rood, Frudle, Big Show in 25th, yeah, Adrian Day, Greg Williamson, Del Levesque. Greg Minar makes it through in 29. Phil Atwell yeah. and then Baptiste Piron, Inige, Chapelet, Brosnan all drop down. Then Masters, Grissel, Vieira, Redding, Vige, Wallace, Silva, Brannigan. Rick McDonald rounds out the top 50. Then it's Blankensop, Breeden in 53rd after that big impact. Jacob Dixon in 54th. Nico Malali, our first starter. Fearing Luke Meyer Smith for that huge crash. Ollie Davis, another crasher, unfortunately. Kaya Hearn and Jack Piercy blew the back tire off it. Mm, bummer for Kai, man. He's been riding good all weekend. Okay. <laughs> As the commentary support team make their way towards the booth. I want those guys to play a song. Yeah, I actually be don't. Good. <laughs> I Here, here's what they the schedule. <laughs> 7 o'clock Central European time will be the Downhill Elite Women's Final. Then the Downhill Elite Men's Final tomorrow. All about cross-country Olympic men on the 23, getting us off and underway. 3 o'clock Central European time. And then the elites will start from 7. But a serious downhill race to deal with here in Snowshoe before all of that happens. Well, that's good. Seems like we got all the players into the finals for the most part. Set up for a good race. Yeah. That was There was a middle section of that where they were all around 320. Yeah. That was just, <laughs> yeah, you that, couldn't that, take your eyes off it. Track's drying out. Well, good to see. Hopefully we can keep air in the tires and everybody's got to get a full run in. Stay on the bike. Valley Hole closing in. Closing eyes. in on the overall title. Look at the eyes. Every time I think of her, I just I have like this face ingrained in my brain of her her eyes. Lloyd Bruni also closing in as well. Don't go anywhere. Elite downhill finals are on their way live and direct from the United States of America. We'll see you then. Thanks for watching.